Welcome to our lecture on 7.4. Before I get started, I want to point out that I made a slight change in our calendar today and I sent you all an email and I uploaded the revised file on Canvas. Uh, the only sections we're going to do this week are 7.3 and 7.4. So let's get back to 7.4. Here's the big picture that we went through last time. We're trying to solve differential equations by using Laplace transforms. And, and we went through this circuit last time, and I just want to point out what we're going to be working on today. We're going to be doing more of this direction. And then we'll put it all together in the next section, which is section 7.5. All right. so. Let's practice taking some inverse Laplace transforms. For this first problem, we know that L of t cubed is 3 factorial, which is 6, over s to the fourth. So if we want L inverse of 3s to the fourth, we know we're thinking it's going to be t cubed times something, but if we took L of that, we'd have a 6 on top. We only want a 3 on top, so we'll multiply that by a half. Okay, for this next problem, we know from our table that L of sine BT is B over S squared plus B squared. So this is going to be a sine problem where B is the square root of 7. So we're going to have sine of the square root of 7t. But if we took L of that, we'd have a root 7 on top. So we're going to have to divide by 1 over root 7 here. All right, next one. If you look in your table, you'll see that all of, in the s column, all the coefficients of s are 1. So. We're going to need to do some serious work on this one before we can use the table. It looks closest to formula 4 in the table. So the first thing we need to do is get that 3 out of there. So we'll factor a 3 out and write that as s minus 2 thirds, and that's all squared. Okay, now distribute that square. That's L inverse of 1 over 9 times s minus 2 thirds squared. And then take the 1 ninth and put it on top. This is L inverse of 1 ninth, because that's a constant and that can just come out. And now in the denominator, I have s minus 2 thirds squared. So now it looks like Formula 4 with A equal 2 thirds. So the 1 ninth is a constant, comes out, and then we're left with, from formula 4, T e to the 2 thirds T. Let's look at another one where you need to pull out a constant first. This one, CS stands for complete the square. This one has a 2 in front of the S squared, so let's get rid of that right off the bat. This is L inverse of 3 over twice S squared plus 4S plus 5. Now take that 2, bring it upstairs. So two, 3 halves is our constant. This is L inverse of 3 halves over S squared plus 4S plus 5. All right. Now, let's uh, complete the square. So this is L inverse of 3 halves over, okay, s squared plus 4s. If I want to write that as a perfect square, it's going to have to be s plus 2 squared, because that's the only way I'm going to get a 4s as my middle term. 
So that'll give me s squared plus 4s. I'm going to erase this in a second. s squared plus 4s plus 4. Now I have s squared plus 4s plus 5. So my correction factor is that I needed to add on an additional 1. That way, when I multiply out s plus 2 squared and then I add 1, I'll get what I started with, which is s squared plus 4s plus 5. Okay, now where does that get me? That gets me to formula 8 with a equal negative 2 and b equal 1. And 3 halves is a constant. So by formula 8, this is going to be 3 halves e to the negative 2t and then sine t. All right, I suggest you pause the video and try E on your own before you look at the answer. By the way, if I'm going too fast or too slow, if you go to YouTube, um, click on the bottom of the video, the settings button, you can do playback speed. You can speed me up or slow me down. All right, so L inverse of S plus 3. Let's complete the square in the denominator. Uh, in order to get the first two terms, s squared plus 2s, I'm going to need an s plus 1 quantity squared. But when I square that out, I'll get s squared plus 2s plus 1. I want plus 10, so I need to add 9 more units on. It's that easy. There's no special formulas, you just do it by inspection. Okay, now this is close to number 9 with a equal negative 1, but not quite. Because if you notice in number 9, the term in the denominator, s minus a, has to appear in the numerator. Okay, so we'll just make it appear. L inverse of... We want an s plus 1 upstairs, so we'll just put an s plus 1 instead of an s plus 3. All right, but we need to um, keep our expression equivalent to the original. So we have an s plus 1, we want an s plus 3, so we're missing two units. So we'll add that on as a separate fraction. Now, if we added those two fractions, we'd be back to an s plus 3 on the top. So, this guy is number 9, and this guy is number 8. So, we're going to use, and this is very common. Once you complete the square, you'll often end up with a number 8, 9 combo. So, one's going to be sine, one's going to be cosine. All right, so in both cases, a is negative 1 and b is 3. So our first guy is going to be e to the negative t cosine 3t. And our second guy, we need a b on top. So we need a 3 on top. We have a 2. So if we put a 3 on top, we better divide by 3 later. So this one will be 2 thirds e to the negative t sine 3t. Okay, just to make sure you understand that, if I take L of e to the negative t sine 3t, I'll get a 3 upstairs, which will cancel with this 3 that I put here and I'll be back to my original 2 on top. So you have to do a little bit of massage of terms. OK, last problem. Because this is f, but we did g and h in class last time. And I just put up, I re-put up the solutions that we did last time. So this is the last actual computation problem we have to do for this lecture. All right, so for this one, uh, 
we could do partial fractions. So let's write 1 over s squared plus 3s as a, well, first of all, we need to factor it, 1 over s times s plus 3. So this is going to be a over s plus b over s plus 3. All right. You might think, well, why aren't we going to complete the square on this one? And the reason is, is because um, if we tried to complete the square on this, we'd have uh, s plus something squared, but then we'd have minus something squared as our correction factor, and none of these formulas have a minus in them. It's plus b squared in each case. So you could try completing the square on this one, but it's not going to work. So we're going to go to partial fractions. Let's clear denominators. So let me get rid of this. Clear denominators, multiply both sides by the denominator on this side. This gives us 1 equals a times s plus 3 plus bs. And then pick convenient values of s. If s is negative 3, then I get 1 equals negative 3b. So b is negative 1 third. And then if s is 0, 1 equals 3a, so a is 1 third. So by partial fractions, I want L inverse of a third over s minus a third over s plus 3. Now it's super easy. This is just one third minus one third e to the negative three t. All right. So you might want to, you know, not look at the solutions and just try and redo g and h for practice. And then I added a couple more partial fraction videos for you. So here's three partial fraction videos if you need some practice with that. But as I said in class before, um, I want you to be able to do the basic partial fractions, but if they get too complex in your homework, then use Symbol Lab to help you out and save some time. And then here are three practice problems for you to do after this video ends, which is right now, and then there's solutions at the end. Um, for announcements, there's no, uh, we're not doing Zoom this week, but you do have a discussion board due on Sunday night. All right, that's a wrap.